Hi, I'm Ismail and uh, welcome to this video series on finding data for use in uh, QGIS. What I'll be covering is I'll be covering some of those basic processes that we um, go through when we need to find some data. Um, of course, when you are at the university campus, we have a GeoServer with all our spatial data on it, and that's probably the first place to go and look. But in general, there are some tricks that you can use to find data. When looking for data, you should be aware of there's two types of data you can use in QGIS. You can use data that is coordinate set, so data that already has coordinate data in it, what you might call typical GIS data, spatial data. Um, a good approach to finding that type of data is simply to Google of the keyword GIS. Um, so if you wanted to look for some data on um, Kenya, you would see here. Kenya and um, it will give you a series of references to places where you can find GIS data on Kenya. So basically, um, as always, Google is your friend and um, using the keyword GIS in your search will often give you a reasonable search result. Um, in Google, you could also do things like saying file type. Um, but in general, for looking for GIS data, um, file type is not necessarily a good approach. So we have coordinate based data, which is, or if it's contained its own spatial data in it. And then we have reference based data. Uh, reference based data is data that refers to a location by some form of identifier. It's typically statistical units so that vary from a statistical office can download data describing the statistical properties of a municipality or a, as you call it in EU connections, a notch unit. Um, but also addresses, as we have seen on the video where we work with uh, green grocers, um, we can have firm data from firm database is typically bound to the address or organizational data so who is a member of the danish wine producing association well that list would typically be address based so reference data is data that through a identifier or more than one identifier so street house number and so on for addresses reference to locations that we have our spatial data for. And there's really no difference in the use of them. Um, Reference-based data is often just as useful as data that you have with coordinates in it. Um, so those are some of the different approaches you should remember that we have these basic two types of data, data with coordinates or coordinate-based data, or tabular data, which typically is reference data is so just like some form of spreadsheet where you can then join this data into your spatial data. Um, I've made some of them in bold, and that's because it's some of those we'll be talking about um, in the following. The ones that are not bold is not because I want to talk about them in the following videos, but they have been covered in other videos. So um, First thing we'll be talking about is event lists. Um, um, so typically, uh, a list of um, some form of uh, yeah event, uh -huh. um, such as earthquakes, airplane tracking, observations of animals, things like that. So then they typically delivered to you as comma separated files of uh, some other set form of separated values. Um, so we're covering them. Then we have the, the KML and KMZ files. Um, that's the two file formats. The set is basically just a zipped KML. 
um, that you use in Google Earth and Google Maps. I cover that in a, um, a earlier video on working with KML files. One thing you should be aware of if you start Googling for data, and this is for instance by writing the file type KML, is that you should be aware that KML is a file format that quite a lot of people can generate data in and there's really a lot of mm, semi-suspicious data out there in the KML format. Um, so if you want to use something that should, is official such as this World Heritage site I put up as an example here, if you um, KML it you will find lots of odd people that has generated them and they are relatively lacking in uh, updated. But if you go to uh, UNESCO's web page, you can find the official KML file. But it won't be the first hit you get when you Google it. Um, so be aware when using KML files. Um, there is quite a lot of yeah, suspicious data around. Then I'll be talking about raster data. Um, raster data normally is not a problem. We have worked with lots of raster data. We have done VMS server, aerial photographs, topographical maps, so on. Um, the ones I'll be talking about is the ones that you find um, as basically scanned maps, scanned drawings, and they do not have any coordinates in them. So we'll be covering the process of setting coordinates onto um, an image which is called georeferencing, and how we do that in uh, QGIS. Vector data, we'll be covering that, we've been using vector data all the time. So um, basically, you just go out and find it. Here, it might be a good idea to include the keyword shapefile, so type shapefile geology, um, to be specific in that, it, that, you want, um, that you want vector data. Most of the vector data that's lying around on the internet is in this shapefile format. So um, a, a good good search would be to put this right shapefile um, and then geology for instance. So those are those vector ones. Reference data, basically statistical units um, or admissive units or reference grids which are the ones that we find statistical data on, and then, as I mentioned, addresses. After I've talked about all of these different types and how we can use them, I will talk about some of the, what we call portals, so places to go to look. There are some start pages that you could, um, you could address. But let's start with the different types of um, data.